All right, guys, Tim McCamus is back in the shop today, and I want to show you some new product stuff we have. Over the years, these cars have changed dramatically from what they were 25, 30 years ago. And so as the power plants make more power and the cars go faster, a lot of these products have to increase in the strength and durability and deflection and things that they, they that things that used to be good then don't really fly now. So I want to talk to you about these four link bar kits and we have a very popular uh, line of uh, do it yourself stuff. We have uh, um, four link bar kits that you cut and weld yourself, uh, wishbone kits, a lot of this stuff that you can make uh, to fit your specific application. One of our kind of standard bears here is this, uh, this inch and three eighths uh, diameter 095 wall four link bar kit. Comes with four tubes and eight tube adapters and it's a cut to length uh, process to fit your application. Now, back in the old days when I was racing, uh, you know, we used to use uh, inch and a quarter diameter. So just to, to kind of tell you how things change, inch and a quarter 095 wall um, used to be a standard four link bar size. But um, with a lot of uh, power increases and the, and the tracks getting so much better and the traction being so much tighter, they're, they just don't fly. You know, so you have to increase the size of these tubes so that you don't get a lot of bow or deflection in those bars, um, especially in the bottom bars, because that's where you're going to get a lot of push. You know, your, your top bar is kind of in a pull motion and your bottom bar is in a push motion. So, you know, when, that, when, the, when the car leaves the starting line, it's trying to push this together and it's trying to bow this bar. Um, so we want to increase the size of that to help that deflection. So, like I said, we've been selling this inch and three eighths bar for a long time. It's a very popular kit, but now we're seeing a lot of, uh, I mean, we're seeing huge power increases. I mean, these procharger cars, turbocharger cars, supercharger cars, they make big, big power. So we have a need for, a, for an even heavier duty kit than that. So 1800 to 2000 horsepower range, you, this is what you want to use. Anything over that, you probably want to step that up a little bit. So if you're you know, if you're 1,200, 1,500, you can probably get by with an inch and a quarter four link bar. You get up close to 2,000, probably want to step up to something like this inch and three eighths kit. If you get over 2,000, we have a kit that we've designed for that, which is really extreme. So um, that's going to be from inch and three eighths. We're going to go to inch and five eighths for the bottom bar and inch and a half for the top bar. So that kit comes with two different size uh, tubes. And the reason we went to this bottom bar so big is because it's going to take all the deflection out of that uh, bottom bar. So, you know, for instance, inch and five eighths, this is the same diameter tubing that your main hoop and your main structure of your chassis is going to be built out of, only this is going to be a lot thicker wall. Your chassis tube is going to be like an 083 wall, or this is going to be a 120 wall. So you've got this massive diameter and heavy wall thickness. So that's where you get a lot of strength for this bow factor is to get some diameter and some wall thickness. That's what's gonna do. Smaller diameter, easy to bow. So imagine if I had a piece of half inch tubing here, I could easily bow that by hand, but this monster, not gonna happen. I mean, this, this thing is gonna be tough. So this kit's gonna come with two top bars of inch and a half 120 wall, two bottom bars, inch and five eighths 120 wall, and these four, um, left hand tube adapters and four right hand tube adapters. Now, just to give you kind of a comparison, um, this is what you're gonna get with that inch and three eighths kit, and then this is what you get with the inch and five eighths. So you can see the difference in these things is just crazy. So with all of our kits, we have a nice set of instructions and we've got a lot of little fixtures and jigs and stuff that we um, send with our kits to help set this stuff up. And one of the uh, fixtures we're going to include is this nice little jig here to put these rosette holes in. So what happens is, is these tubes need to be rosette welded and then they need to be welded around this rotational seam here too. So this tube adapter is going to slip in here and as you can see it's got this nice sleeve on the inside of it. It's going to slip down inside here and then we're going to lightly chamfer the end of this tube to provide us with a nice V fit here to weld. But these rosettes are what's going to get done first. And on these smaller tubes, on the inch and a half, you can see that they're, um, this is, is not too thick. It's, it's thinner than like this. So here's your inch and five-eighths one. This is your inch and a half. So when you do this rosette weld, 
for the cinch and a half tube, you can easily, first thing you're going to do is weld this with some decent heat and kind of burn this edge in and get that welded in here, get a nice hot rosette spot here in four places around this tube. That's what this is going to help you do, okay? So as you do that, when you, when you first drill it, we've got this jig made and it, it fits on the inside of the inch and a half and then on the outside of the inch and five eighths. So you can easily line this up and use it to mark these hole locations. So it's already set the back set for you and then gives you four holes which are gonna be 180 degrees apart from each other. So this is a real nice little fixture to mark these with and then just put them in your drill press, poke this quarter inch hole in here. Once you do that with the inch and a half, you're ready to weld that together. But the inch and five eighths is so much thicker. I mean, if you can kind of look at the difference in that, you can see how thick this wall is. So what's going to happen is you're going to have a little bit of a um, problem getting enough penetration in that rosette. So we don't want that just to set on top here. We actually want it to burn through into this sleeve here. So this is just an example of what we do. Once, once we set this up and drill the holes in our tube, we put this back in and we'll tack this or you can just hold it by hand. But we want you to spot this drill down into this sleeve, okay? And we're gonna go about halfway through that thickness there. So when we spot this in, we're gonna just take that quarter inch drill, we're gonna spot down in there and drill about halfway through this thickness because we want that to burn through that sleeve. And actually when, when we're done, I wanna be able to look down inside here from this end and see that weld burn through to the inside of this sleeve here. So I wanna see that. I wanna actually wanna see a little bubble inside here where I've got enough heat in there to burn down and attach that rosette really good to this sleeve in four places around here. If you can't see it on the inside, if you look down here and it kind of looks just like this, maybe you see a little heat ring, but that's all you see, that's not enough. You're not getting that welded hot enough and you're not getting that burned down in there. Like these inch and a half ones, they'll, they do just fine because they're thinner wall, but the inch and five eighths ones, they're so thick that you have to give it a little help and spot that down in there with a drill. So the inch and five eighths uh, jig here fits tight on the outside and then you can use it to mark or you can also just put it up in the drill press and just drill right down through it. You're only going to use it one time, but um, it will really save you some time and help you out from laying this out. It's going to give you the right layout for the quadrant and it's also going to give you the right setback from the end of the tube down to the center of the rosette hole. So this little piece here comes free with the kit and it's super nice. So you've got these cut and drilled, and when, when you're setting these up, you're going to need a custom length. The proper way to do this is to go ahead and mock your um, rod ends up with the tube adapters. And when you set this up, give yourself about five threads here past the jam nut. So we're going to slip our jam nut on here, and we're going to count back five threads, and we're going to set the jam nut there, and then we're going to put the tube adapter on that. Then we can use that to um, measure from this point to the inside of the other point when you've got that mocked up on the car. So that'll give you your exact length. So when I spin this up, it's going to look something like this. This is going to go on the rear end housing side. The left hand's in, we always put to the front side. So the, the ones with the hex on them are going to be left. The ones without the hex are going to be right. So on, the, on this chassis here, like you see it setting, this is the way it would go. Hex to the front non-hex to the back. So this is your left hand in. Once you lay all that out and you get this set up, you can cut your tubes to length and you want to cut it to the exact length of the inside of this little B-notch right here. And then you can see these tubes here. So we just take these on a belt sander and we use the disc side of the belt sander and we just spin them by hand and put a little bit of a chamfer on this edge here so that when this slips together, I've got a little V groove there to get a nice hot weld in there. The directions that come with these explain this in detail how to do it, but on your rosettes, once you weld them and fill it up, um, you want to have a slight dome to the top of that rosette. You don't want it to be sunken in or concave in that in the hole. Same way on the weld here. You want to put enough rod in here where you have a slight upward dome to that weld and not sunken down in. So you should have a a nice color to the weld. So one of the things we do is uh, when we're doing these spot welds, we'll put this together and we'll, we'll weld these two spot welds here first. Then we'll go to this end and weld two spot welds on this side. 
the rosettes. Then we're going to set this aside. Then we're going to do all four of these bars. Then we're going to come back and start with that first one again and do these other two and then do these opposing two here and then set this bar aside. So you don't want to weld all this at once and get this thing super hot on the end. So you set it aside when it's cool to the touch, then you can weld the ends in. So now we've got all of our rosettes done. We're going to come back and weld this rotational weld that's going to put this, uh, fill this seam up right here. And then flip it over, do this end, set this bar aside, and go back through the stack and then you'll be all done. So if it's, uh, if it's too hot to the touch, it's not ready to weld. So weld two, weld two on this end, set it aside, come back to it when it's cooled down. It'll make a much nicer weld and your weld will be, um, it'll have a much cleaner look to it. If you're, if you're welding this up and your rosettes or your rotational weld here is kind of gray and flat looking, it's too hot, okay? So it should be shiny, have a nice kind of a gold color to it, but it shouldn't look gray and kind of a flat gray look is, is you're just getting it way too hot. But again, you do want good penetration on these rosettes, so you have to get them burnt in first. And like I said, we'll, we'll kind of fusion this edge in to get it started, because one, one thing you don't want to do is start welding this rosette and just plow a bunch of rod in there right off the bat, because what's going to happen is you're only going to have a little small point on this sleeve where it's going to hit and it's not going to penetrate. So you want to get this fusion welded in here, burn it in good and hot, and that'll kind of open that hole up. So right now that hole is square drill, but once you fusion it in, it'll look like this. It'll lay it out, it'll lay that, that sharp edge out. Then you can get that center hot and start putting some rod in there and swirl that around and get that thing filled up so you get a nice, good rosette in there. If your rosettes are good, your, your rotational weld's good, you're perfect on this bar, but make sure they're right. I mean, make sure you look down in there when you're done and see a hump and some actually some rod like when we weld these up here we'll actually the guys push the rod in so hard they'll actually push a piece of rod through to the inside so you'll you can actually see that hanging down inside there it doesn't matter that the threads can't get down that far so it's not going to affect anything like this rod end can't get down even close to those rosette welds so even if you do get a little push in there it's not going to hurt a damn thing so anyway, check this out. This is a super nice kit. It's more than adequate for anything that you guys want to throw at it. The Ascension 3 8 kit is awesome. It is very popular for us, but if you got big power, or even if you think you got big power, and you want to go to something like this, it's perfect for every car. It's got, it comes with everything you need, and also good instructions, plus this little jig, which will really save you some time and help you out from laying this out. It's going to give you the right layout of for the quadrant, and it's also going to give you the right setback from the end of the tube down to the center of the rosette hole. So thanks again for watching, guys. Hope you all are doing good. Uh, if you have any questions, give us a call. But this kit is available and ready for you to uh, put together. Thanks for watching.